Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez back again after a few days off because I hurt the hell out of my shoulder. Um, I helped my family move some heavy furniture, basically stuff that came in in boxes and helped them put it together. And a couple of days later, I felt like I had completely destroyed my shoulder. I don't know what I did. I really didn't feel anything during the process, but right now I'm able to raise my arm up so for the last several days i have been just putting ice packs and sitting upstairs in my easy chair watching a lot of television and now it feels a lot better so i am good to go so far hopefully nothing else will happen uh, in my last live stream and i hope you guys were able to catch it if not you can always go back and catch the replay we had michael lee from precision colors the owner himself appeared live with me and we talked about a bunch of things we answered questions and it was really really amazing uh, to have him on board and he promised that he will be here with us every month hopefully so that's something to look forward to now we talked about cartridges and these are the refillable cartridges that are often sold for printers such as epson mostly and i don't recommend them at all but also available for some can printers in fact they even have not refillable but so-called compatible cartridges for the pro 1000 i assume they were because really these cartridges are nothing special they really do not have any kind of internal components that play into the ink delivery performance of the cartridge itself we're talking about Epson, and we had a specific question asked about an R2400. Now, that's an oldie but a goodie. A really good printer. I think it's only seven colors. It was the so-called 2K instead of the new 3K type printers. In other words, one photo black, one matte black. That constitutes the 1K, and then one gray. And the great thing about it was that you could just switch your mat and your photo black manually it shared just one channel but you actually did it manually yes it used up a little bit of ink in the process but anyway regardless this person was having a lot of leaking problems well i thought back in the days when i was refilling that printer which i no longer have by the way and yeah yeah i remember some instances where my cartridges would literally leak out. And I'm thinking, okay, well, what would cause that? Well, it could be a seal that's not sealing properly. This is a typical Epson refillable cartridge. You have the fill plug, you have the vent plug. If this vent plug is not sealing well, or this O-ring is not sealing well, you will have leaks. But upon further conversation with precision colors owner mike lee he did state that yeah he has seen that before and it's usually due to some very very loose manufacturing practices in that part of the world that provides us with all of these cartridges now here's a refillable for the pro 3880 3800 series they look identical to the ones for the P800, by the way, being sold in other countries because that's the only folks that can actually utilize those cartridges. Yeah, they sell them here as well, but you can only get one use out of them, by the way. R3000, which is exactly the same as the P600. The only difference would be the chip. And again, our cartridge for the R2000 here. All very similar cartridges. Here's the problem. And here's a weird practice that that part of the world uses in their manufacturing techniques. If an importer is willing to pay more per piece, they are then willing to make sure that the tolerances are kept a lot tighter. Isn't that crazy? It is, but that's a fact. That happens with the tool industry power tools drills saws that type of thing if the importer wants a higher quality level or tighter tolerances to be applied to that batch they will do that but they will charge you more per unit so 
companies like inkjetmall.com will actually go send a team to that country and oversee the manufacturing process. So they claim, and this is their claim, I really do not know for sure because I have never used their cartridges that they order, that they supposedly oversee the manufacturing of, okay? I have never used them. So they claim that they are much better quality than what you would buy from eBay. Now keep in mind that there's not that many factors that make these cartridges. This P600 or R3000 body is pretty much identical regardless who sells it unless that particular importer wants to spend the money and time to send a team over to China and then oversee the manufacturing of these cartridges. So you're going to get a lot of inaccuracies as far as the fit, as far as the internal operations of these cartridges. So let me tell you a little bit something about real Epson cartridges. I hope you can see this clearly. I don't know if you can see a semicircular indentation on this side of the cartridge. Not this side, but this side. As you can see, it has, it looks like a, like a danger sign. Um, it has four quadrants. That is a special diaphragm that I think, I'm not sure, maintains a certain internal pressure as ink is being drawn out, okay? The, as you draw out ink, but you have to maintain almost a perfect balance internally. And this keeps through the many, many maze-like channels and little compartments and such of ink always, always flowing correctly. Not so with these. This is just an opening. It's got a priming chamber over here. So sort of like a little semi-arc area. It's got a little micro filter screen. That's it. It's got a couple of internal little separators to keep the cartridge from collapsing, but really that's it. There is no way that this cartridge being sold for the R2000, which by the way, I don't use anymore because they're horrible can compare to this. Absolutely not. The performance of the OEM cartridge clearly outperforms a refillable cartridge. Really, there's not much that we can do. That is all that's available. And like I said, unless the company that's importing them is willing to go there and oversee the manufacturing process and make sure that tolerances are kept as tight as possible, you're simply not going to get I, want to, I don't want to say a quality product. I want to say a consistent product where batches will vary. In fact, individual cartridges will vary. You may have a leaky cyan cartridge where none of the other cartridges leak. Okay? It's that bad. So if you were wondering about why your refillable cartridges are leaking, that may be the reason. And really, there's not much you can do other than buy OEM. Yeah, sorry. That's the only almost 100% way you're going to get near perfect performance from your cartridges. And even those really are not absolutely perfect. There will always be a few that will not perform correctly. You will have sealing problems. You will have leakage. You will have chips that don't work the first time around and so forth. It happens. Now, OEM Pro 10 cartridges. These cartridges are built with an internal ink bag that is actually maintained at the correct pressure, positive pressure, by an internal diaphragm spring. Very, very intricate, okay? Don't look at this like it's just a piece of plastic. It isn't. It has been really, really well designed. And the R&D has to have been incredible, okay? Internally, inside the bag, there is something else, a little paddle, and allows the ink to be agitated as the cartridge moves back and forth during printing. That little ore, if you will, will keep the ink agitated 
By the way, there is a function in the driver in the maintenance tab under options that says to turn on or off ink quality. People think that's cleaning cycles. No, it's not. It's just that agitation cycle. Occasionally, you start a job and you will just hear that carriage moving back and forth. It's just agitating those inks. Do not turn that off. It's built into this cartridge. So if you buy a refillable or a compatible cartridge, it's not going to have that degree of technology built into it, okay? It's not. It may not even have a bag, okay? That's horrible, okay? Absolutely. Refill your original cartridges. Do not ever buy compatible or some kind of refillable cartridges. They might even make a sponge cartridge for the Pro 10, and you know that's not going to work whatsoever. Now, OEM for the Pro 100. Again, there is a lot of technology built into this cartridge. People are very sarcastic when they complain about ink cost and they complain about what they have to pay. You're paying for technology. There is a dual density sponge here. There's a serpentine vent that is designed specifically to allow the proper airflow and maintain equalization of this chamber and this chamber, okay? As far as the hydraulics that need to be maintained as you use up your ink. At the bottom, there is an entrance. It also has an optical prism that can detect when this chamber here is empty, all right? None of that is available in your refillable, crappy, or compatible, crappy cartridges you buy on eBay. Do not get those. Use your own original ones. If you're afraid to process your own, modify your own, buy a set of already modified ones. I have a link on my descriptions. I get nothing for that. I just give a little publicity to the person who is providing these for you. You will not have a single problem. Don't resort to refillable cartridges. With Epsons, I'm sorry, that is your only option, okay? Your only option. They do not make these cartridges so that you can refill them. If that was the case, we would have found out a method long, long ago, okay? And so, unfortunately, that's not available for us to be able to use. That's why we love our Canon printers so much, because they have not decided to lock us out of modifying our own original cartridges, which are the best engineering possible, as opposed to having to use the equivalent, which, yeah, is convenient. You can refill those refillable cartridges, but they cannot contain all of the engineering marvels that are inside those cartridges. They are patented. They cannot duplicate them by law. So you're not gonna get the same performance out of a refillable or a compatible Canon cartridge, okay? You're just not going to. So don't put your printer at risk by going the cheap way and buying any of those products. Really, take my word for that, okay? All right, I think that's it. Oh, by the way, do you see these two boxes right here? If you go back, I have a special playlist for action cameras where I've been testing all of these different cameras. And right now, I'm photographing myself with an AEES-71T. The T stands for touchscreen camera. It's a 4K down to 720p. I'm using 1080, 60 frames per second right now on me. And as you can see, it is totally adequate. I have taken this out on jaunts outside and it records beautifully. Well, I have one here that I only pay like $35 for, a complete kit. Turns out it is not as great as I thought it would be. And some of the reviews that I saw really were very misleading. So I'm trying on a Castle V50, 4K, 30 frames per second. This only has this has 4K 30 frames per second, but I think it's I think it's faked. This has 4K only 15 frames per second. So it would be good for like here, but not for action. You would get a lot of jitter. So I'm gonna be testing these in the near future, and I will then be releasing videos on that 
on those two products right there. All right. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm glad that I'm back. I'm feeling a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and edit this and pop it up today so that you guys can enjoy it. And then tomorrow, Saturday, I will be releasing another drone video that I just recently shot that I think you guys will enjoy a lot. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And don't forget this weekend, as always, our live stream. I think it's just going to be me at this point, but that shouldn't be too bad, right? I have some subjects that I need to cover that I haven't had a chance to do so in previous live streams. And by the way, I'm going to ask you guys at the live stream, not here at the comments for this video, but at the live stream, if you do join us, please come up with some subject matter for me to cover. The P900 is not out yet here in this country, so there's nothing that I can talk about that, at least not until I get my hands on one. So again, make sure that you come up with some subjects, some ideas that you would like me to attempt to create a video on and try to cover, answer, whatever, any of those issues, questions you may have. All right, that's enough. Thanks so much. And until the next time, happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.